those of you who um, know C-3PO and Mandalorian, this is Chris Bartlett, so let's hear it for Chris. <laughs> Next is one of my favorite, favorite character actors in the entire universe, and that is Adam Meer. Adam has, you probably know Adam more behind the costume when you look at things like apes, gorillas, films that he's done, he's done some incredible films. Go ahead and jump in there and tell us your latest accolades, Adam. Um, Bad Trip on Netflix. Um, I have a movie coming out with uh, George R. R. Martin that I did last year. Um, Which movie? Yeah, I'm not allowed to. Uh say yet See, it's been going on for two we, years that i'm not allowed to this say. is the problem we had last time i know because we knew what we could say and couldn't say because of the strike and well, was just, uh, that was that was crazy but anyway it's just such an honor to have you here thank you my next person that i have is chris childers i worked with chris at cirque du soleil he's an incredible character you see him as the red bird on top of here He's going to talk to you about that, but also he was the choreographer for Spider-Man 2002. So let's hear it for Chris Childers. <laughs> Next to me is somebody very, or down at the end, is somebody very, very near and dear to my heart because you will find him with people more than what you see on film. Yes, he does film, he does print, but the fact is, he's got probably the biggest heart in the entire world for giving back to his community. So let's hear it for Christopher Canole. <laughs> First, we're going to start with Chris Bartlett. Thank you, Sandy. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm Chris Bartlett. I uh, have been a professional actor for 18 years and um, having the time of my life on The Mandalorian and uh, uh, Ahsoka, uh, all three seasons of Mandalorian, and um, Book of Boba Fett and Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I'm known for playing droids, and uh, I'm a huge nerd. I've been a fan since 77, a Star Wars fan. So um, anyway, I, the, the droid I'm most known for playing is a fluent in over six million forms of communication. I am C-3PO, human cyborg relations. Um, I am the other guy who plays him, um, and uh, anyway, so it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Uh, so I'm happy to be here. Well, we're gonna watch. We're gonna watch a quick video right now that will show you who Chris is, and let's pray that this goes off without a hitch. If we don't have sound, that's good because he'll be able to talk through it. So I play bounty hunters and uh, mercenaries. Uh, they all have different personalities, which is really fun. Uh, this is Q90, who was uh, known for uh, flying Mando's ship and breaking Twilight out of prison. Uh, there's C-3PO on the Oscars. And uh, the ferryman in Mandalorian. An alien species, Kubaz species. Oh, there's, there's one Jack from Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, I like sinister bounty hunters. They're fun. Yeah, so... You know, you can see the droid movement. Uh, oh, yes, I work with the, the little green guy a lot. He's as real in person as he is on TV. Yeah. <laughs> also, that little guy, R2. Um, yeah. Uh, Notice those movements, because we're going to be walk, working with you on how those movements were created. So you're going to be coming out of here with learning what it is that we do, and Adam's gonna lead us through that. Yeah, they're all different. You notice like the teacher droid is very calm and, and soothing to the kids, where C-3PO is always a fish out of water. He's always frantic, and and uh, bounty hunters are, are cold killing machines, so they're um, more calculated in their movements, and then awkward aliens in elevators. <laughs> So it's fun to come up with uh, their animation for each, each different character. The cool thing is when you come up with your own character, you own it. And that's important for you to develop in what you're doing. Chris, you want to tell us how you build a costume? Oh, well, uh, I got started in acting, uh, building costumes in uh, 2000. And um, so all the uh, costumes 
that I wear on the show, except for Zero and the two aliens, uh, I build all the droids. And so, I, like I said, I was just doing this stuff for fun before. Oh, thanks. Um, and, and, uh, and, and so I, I didn't have any career plan for this. I was just building, you know, uh, whether it was Stormtroopers or Boba Fett or other, you know, costumes for my kids. And then I, I really liked droids, so I spent three years building a, a C-3PO costume that uh, later got me an audition with Lucasfilm. And, and so that was uh, how I started. And then uh, when the new shows started spinning up, then I, I uh, was cast as, as a lot of other characters. <laughs> yeah. Let me just throw this out there. If you're gonna be indoors, outdoors, it doesn't matter. Have the best ventilation when you're working with these chemicals that he works with. Because oh. we want you to be around for a long time. <laughs> yes, you can see I'm wearing a mask there. But, um, okay, notice that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Chris Canole, how are you? See you. I'm doing great. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> I'm so used to having a helmet on and I have to yell <laughs> to, to be heard. So as you can see on the screen, yes, who is this man with a great big heart? the man with the heart of gold, who goes out to all these different races to encourage people and to give them hope. Chris, take it away. Yeah, well, you know, people that know me know my most common expression is when you cosplay. You can, when you cosplay, you're sort of imitating a character, a superhero. When you do charities, you actually become the hero. And so, uh, what I'd like to really encourage is everybody who does cosplay, think about the fact that you can be s the real life person to a kid whose imagination can make that link between what we see with these fine performers on camera and what happens. And the most common movement you need to learn is to kneel or squat. Bring yourself down to the kid's level and it's absolute magic. Um, one of the greatest compliments that a character could have would be when other people do their character. And I will tell you, I met a gentleman today by the name of Jedi, who has your character. Jedi, Jedi would you could like you stand to show up? us what you did for um, uh, Dude Fader? Now, if that isn't a compliment, I don't know what is, because we work so hard to keep you entertained, and once in a while, between the applauses and seeing what you've done is truly incredible. And uh, I just want to thank you, Jedi. That is, that is marvelous. And by the way, that's his real name. So not only does he get a great costume for the rest of his life, he's got a better name for the rest of his life. Tell me about your costume. I'm looking at you here from head to toe. You're a lot lighter than the other costumes, correct? Right. So it just started out as a lark. I used to be a set photographer uh, at a Comic-Con 2014. All the cosplayers said, you know, we challenge you to come up with something. So I took a kid's, remember the Darth Vader helmets with the little voice box that hung down? I painted that gold and wore a Hawaiian shirt. And then I decided, what if I started adding pieces to it? And so anytime a kid gave me a piece of Star Wars stuff, I would glue it to my costume until it became 55 pounds. You try doing a 5K with 55 pounds, that's equal to carrying a sparklets water bottle of five gallons. And so I shed the weight, but then I realized, let's shed the weight off the costume too. So now the whole costume weighs five pounds. And I get to give Chris Bartlett a hard time because what I'm most proud of when I hang out with him is the fact my version are Crocs. Yeah. Yeah, you can sit down too. Oh, that's right. Right. Yeah. But who you can really give a hard time to is Adam Mir. Yeah. Because he's going to tell you about his costume and what he does. Isn't he beautiful? God, he is so beautiful. <laughs> From this to this. 
<laughs> from this? She's a fan. <laughs> well, Adam. I'm Adam Mayer. I'm uh, most known for playing those gorillas. Um, you ready? Let's show it? Yeah. Okay. Son kez görüyor olabilirsiniz. Nesli tükendiği için değil. Çünkü belgesel kanallarınız yarın kapanıyor. Neyse ki ek ücret karşılığında kanallarınızı tekrar açtırabilirsiniz. Hatta açtıracaksınız. Açtıracaksınız. Don't move, don't look him in the eye. He is a zoo animal, so most likely he's going to ignore us. Isn't he cute? So when we started this panel, we did it with Don McLeod, who's, who was my mime teacher back in 1973, not to outdate myself. And to see and be around Adam and Don was really incredible. And Adam's gonna tell us about his costume from head to toe, what you go through, different movements. Let's start with just what's on the slide and that's Tell me everything. That well, I just want to wanna first tell how I yeah. started this sure, crazy sure. thing. Um, so I started studying mime uh, when I was 11 years old, and nobody really studies mime anymore. And when I went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, I had a teacher called Don McLeod, who was one of the most famous mimes back in the day. And later I found out that he was the most prominent guerrilla actor in the 80s and 90s. He did. Um, Men with Two Brains and, and um, uh, Trading Places and also all the special effects in uh, Total Recall uh, along with Rob Bottin and just an incredible person. He was just teaching mime and he realized that I am drawn to it so we became really good friends and one day he got a job at, in 2010 he got a job and he said, my back hurts, do you want to try to get into the gorilla suit and see if it fits? And I said, sure, I'll do it. And I, I, I actually did fit in the suit and I was like, you're doing it from now on. I'm done. And so I kind of took over the gorilla stuff and um, it's a very unique and beautiful little uh, creature to, to become. Um, and uh, so yeah, the, the costume is, uh, is actually a 75 pound costume. <laughs> um, that is extremely restrictive. Uh, you can't really breathe inside, you can't move anything. It's, very claustrophobic. I, I actually happen to like claustrophobic feelings, which is lucky, because I'm, I'm enjoying it. Most people just can't stand it after five minutes. Um, so as you can see, there is there's actually, a, I think, another picture that is how below. Long, how long can you stay with the mask on? Like when you're performing or you're on set, how long a time do you go before you so take your it, break? It, it, when, the head, when the head is on, here it's off. When the, that's not. <laughs> uh, it's about half hour. After half hour, you have to take it off because you literally cannot breathe normal uh, air. So you have to take it off, and it gets about 140 degrees inside. Wow. Um, and then, so you get a, you can get a heart, uh, heat stroke pretty easily. Um, and there is a lot of layers to it. There's b b underneath this layer, there is a whole muscle suit which is made of foam and latex and, and spandex and all these. You can see it here. Oh yeah, that's right. So it's on the on the right side. You see the the bodysuit, and then on top of it there goes the the fur, and on top of that goes the hair. I mean the head. 
And you have makeup. And you have makeup on, yeah, and you cannot. Anyway, it's a tasking um, costume, but it's, um, it's so restrictive that you feel that you become a different person. And then you become a gorilla, really. Because you can smell the stench of years and, and the hair and everything is itchy and everything is heavy. And, and you just become that heavy, weird uh, creature. And then you just, it, it helps. And you I'm have sure. to make it come to life, the movement. Yeah. 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 Also, you have somebody, like when you're making a face, okay, when you, when you do the face, there's somebody with a remote on the other end doing your movements, correct? Yeah, yeah, there is a remote control that m moves the eyebrows and the, and the nostrils and uh, some, some of the lips and stuff like that, and then it's, it's choreographed movement between me doing the movement and the other person doing the expressions. Now, I have some other ones on here, but we're gonna play a little game. Is that real or not real? Is that a real gorilla or a real Adam? Okay, real gorilla? All right. Adam? No. No? It's... Adam? Okay. Well, it's actually Don, but yes. Okay. <laughs> Adam? Good. All right. So, um, we're going we to we're gonna talk about how, if you don't mind, even though yeah, yeah. Chris, your, your thing is up here. When you do your arms and stuff, you have like, like, let's say, if you're walking or sitting, you actually exchange different body parts to your costume. Yes, the, the gorillas have way longer arms than human beings, so there are hand stilts, which is, creates the, the right movement that you can, when you stand up, that it actually looks like a real mm -hmm. gorilla and helps with the movement. Uh, and then when you grab things, there's another hand, a glove, that you gotta shoot from kind of close up um, to use it, because it, it doesn't, it's not the le right length. If you notice Adam when he's moving, it's not all out here. Everything starts in here. If you noticed when he lifted his arm, you know, when he lifted his arm or when he did something, it all comes out here. And so you're going to be working with us on that shortly. Uh, we're going to talk about, you know, Gumby here. <laughs> this is Chris Childers. And you could see how flexible he is and what he does. And he's going to tell us a little bit. And I have your video too when it comes to creating a character. This is Chris Childers. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I was um, a performer with Cirque du Soleil for quite a few years, uh, and in the year 2000, Sam Raimi, who was gonna direct Spider-Man, came to Cirque du Soleil to officially ask them if they would help them figure out how Spider-Man would move. Um, Ian Bryce was also there, the producer, um, and I was at that table meeting, and our publicist was right next to me, and I had been doing the Redbird character at Cirque for quite a few years, and Cirque said, no, they don't want to do Spider-Man. And the publicist literally said to me, Chris might want to do it. <laughs> so I ended up going uh, from Vegas to LA for about a year and a half, choreographing the entire Spider-Man, uh, his wall climb, his web slinging through the city, um, and a lot of improvisational things uh, for the very first film. So that was quite a an epic little side job, and my friends and family always rib me about that, <laughs> because I literally got it by somebody saying, oh, Chris might want to do it. And then Sam really liked what I was doing, so he kept me on for a while. Um, let's see a little bit about Chris just letting go in a room and being as creative as he can to figure out what he's able to do and not do. Because the last thing we want you to do is to put a costume on and then you stretch so far out of your element that you realize you've pulled all these muscles. So you really want to warm up before you put your costume characters together. Let's go take a peek at Chris here. I'll be teaching that shortly. Just kidding. <laughs>
pretty cool, huh? So let's see what happened when he was working with the actor. This was a lot of fun to create with Sam Raimi because they had this all storyboarded, but they had no idea how they wanted the Spider-Man to move, so I was hanging in a harness for quite a few hours um, just above the ground trying to keep my knees up. That's why they were like happy I was flexible. <laughs> I had to keep my knees up without hitting the ground and place my hands and crawl down the wall, which they flipped that way. But that was, it was really, it was a blast to, to figure that out with Sam. It was really fun. So, a couple facts here, Adam. We're going to go through, it could be hot, it could be yep. heavy. Um, how, tell us a little bit about the costume. Oh yeah, so once you get into the suit, and I'm sure that Chris can say the same thing, it has a characteristics already in it. So for the gorilla suit, it's very heavy and very hot and very itchy and weird. And for a robot, I'm sure it's very restrictive. And, and so you, you kind of try to go with that feeling and, and imagine what it would feel like if you were a droid or if you were a gorilla or if you were an alien that is too, too fluid and too... And then for me, I, I just try to imagine how would I act? What would I be like if I were a, a gorilla? Not like as an actor who playing a gorilla, but more like as actually a gorilla. What, what would I do? Let's mm -hmm. talk about the one movement at a time, and if you could show us how it works, and then the, we want the audience to do it with you. How, the fact that you have one okay. movement at a time. So uh, for the gorilla, it's, it, okay, so a lot of people think that gorillas are aggressive, and they are fast, and they are angry, and they're not. They're really calm animals. They're very slow and everything until you get, you get them pissed off. But... <laughs> Most of the time they are really, and they would eat stuff. So for example, they are eating some and then they notice something over there and they keep eating and the hand moves, you know, stays here and then they go back and I look and they took a bite and go back. So this would be an isolated movement that you only move one part of your body. Like mimes do that a lot, uh, break dancers, pop lockers do, they move like one part of the, of the body without the other one, you know, like, that's similar to droids. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, every limb is an individual machine, so uh, the another, arms yeah. are separated, so that, that's how yeah, it moves too. And then that makes it not human. And once you start moving like human, that's magical. Let's see gone. if you can follow what I do, and then they'll jump in. And what we're gonna do is just, um, just where, you, where you're seated, just take your right arm, and only your right arm moves up. And now your right arm goes down, okay. and then the left arm up, and the left hand down. And now move your head to your right, which will be our left. And only the head comes back, and nothing else moves. So if you did it correctly, it would look like up, down, up, down. Look, you guys are getting into the character. Turn, back. You see? And so Adam's going to lead us through a couple more things, which is the opposite movement. So stay, stay standing, okay? And now he's going to show you what happens when you add opposite movement, okay? But you get to pull a rope? You mean? Yeah, rope. Oh, rope. rope. And, rope okay, so that, yeah. okay, so the rope. So again, uh, the famous, one of the famous my moves. And if you want to try it, come on up and stand up and try it. <laughs> one of the famous my moves is, is the rope pulling, right? Um, in order to create that illusion, you have to be able to isolate every part of your muscle. So you see the rope, so you see it first, and then you take your hand and you grab it, but you just don't, don't grab it like this a lot, but wrap your fingers around it. Then you take the other one, wrap your finger around that. And then when you move it, you move your hands back and your body forward, so like that. And then you go forward, and you go back. And then you move forward again, so you gotta make sure you that see the that arm movement. stays at the same place <laughs> when you want it to. And then you move it like that. And then when you get pulled, your whole body goes. 
with it, and then if, then you move your legs like like that to see. The so who would like to stand up and do this? Where you're going to do just this? I just use the force when I need to move a rope. <laughs> Yep. Okay. Where we yeah. are right up. there is perfect. Yeah. Just where yeah. you are right now. So this is where you're standing. And what you're going to okay. do is just bring it in. And so then you go in the out. direction, into the direction of the of the rope. You On see the, the rope. The rope. The other thing, exactly. You see the rope. You have to see it. Yeah. And then you put your hand around it. And the other one. And then you pull. And you pull. Oh, you're perfect. The way you, you pull back the hand and then the body forward. And then you go together. And then from this position. Yes, and now bring it out. Nice. That's already good. Watch me, watch me. Bring it in and then you'll put it back out. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Good job. Very nice. Ali called that rope a dope. Cool. Are you great? <laughs> yes. That's great. So when you do that, now Adam adds something which is called the click to the movement, which is how we get the robot. Yeah, well, Chris does. Chris, does. Chris why don't you, you want to demonstrate when we have that click movement? Oh, okay. Well, um, droids in Star Wars are a little different than, than the, the robot if we're, uh, you know, your standard kind of robot. If you're. If you're, uh, oh, oh, yes, hmm. you know, like a, that kind of a click, <laughs> you know, like uh, <laughs> that kind of a thing. But in, in Star Wars, you know, it's a little different. Their um, C-3PO might be, um, yeah, he might, uh, uh, yes, oh, oh, I see, Ex uh, excuse me, you know, like that. Those are, it's a little different. But um, anyway, that's uh, that's kind of a little. No, but, it, but you can still see the delayed yeah. movement. That is, the, the hand doesn't move at the same time. First, the head moves. Oh, what's right. going on there? And then he goes with the hand, and then he's like, oh, right. you just. Oh, it's fine. Oh, I see. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. And that was. Uh, uh, I worked with Anthony Daniels uh, to figure out. He had a lot of great advice. On, on how to uh, how to move that each individual piece is separate and uh, and then uh, that has your that's your foundation of a droid is being able to move everything separately and there's always a termination so it's not like like Adam was saying you know fluid it's uh, you know when he uh, when he uh, gestures this way you know the the hand stops it's not like oh hey over there oh, my goodness oh, yes like that. So each each movement has a termination or a finish, and uh, yeah. That's, that's when you're practicing cosplay, I recommend turn off the sound on the movie and just watch the movement that's because good. sound right. affects what you see. The soundtrack, the talking, really affects your movement. When I found out that I was going to be on the panel. I watched the first two Spider-Men, and then I watched all of Chris uh, Bartlett's work, and I had no idea how much complexity was involved. Because to tell the truth, without the movement of somebody like Chris, Spider-Man's just a kid sitting in his room whining about the fact they got bit by a spider. <laughs> So study the movement. If you, when, before, when you get into cosplay, before you go to a convention, stay in character all through the convention and you'll get much more attention. And the way to do that is really study the character. Don't just make the outfit. Study the character, the movement, and you'll really be a lot happier and you'll get a lot more joy. Adam, I'm going to ask you, when we were taking classes from Don and, and Childers, I got you next, okay? So get warmed up now. Okay, you know what's coming. <laughs> yep. um, Adam, do you remember when Don was teaching us the, the, that click movement, that like when your hand comes down, you actually will go down before you come up? Can you show our wonderful new friends what this is about? Yeah, so that's, a very, it's again, very similar to the, to the original robot movements that you do in dancing or not Star Wars robots, but other robots, 
Uh, pop lockers are very good at it. Um, um, it's it, first of all, it's again the, the isolation of the movement that, of the body. But then when you stop, if you lift can you your stand up for us, thanks. If you if you lift your hand, I can do that and stop. But it just doesn't look like anything. It's just stopping. But if I add a little back, back, and it, it, when you practice it a lot, then it, it just looks like you're stopping. But it actually, there is a little movement that goes back. So like a machine would stop, like, there's like a motion. Right. Yeah, if, exactly. Yeah. A motion if you like notice the movement, if I put my hand down, before I put it up, I'm going to go back down a little lower, down up. Yeah. If I want to go over to the your right, I'm going to go first left, then the right. If I'm going to do something where I want the hand to come up, it's going to go down and then up. So when we do these robot characters, and again, I'm just a panelist, I shouldn't be doing this. So what happens is if I'm going to move my head, it's going to be head over yes. arm. My next one. You see the same clip? The okay, take it away. Yeah, the head, the same thing. You go left and but you go a little right. Do you see that click? Yeah. So I'd like you to do that out in the audience, okay? I want you to look straight at me, and you're going to look to your, your right, which is that way, right? And what you're going to do is to first move left, then right. That's the timing of it, like left and then right, and then carry that movement. One, two, three, click. Oh, she's really good. Okay, and, and take it over as far as you can. Okay, and then I want you to click back. So go even a little further to the right before you come back. Mm -hmm. And keep that even movement. Okay, keep keep it so that it's like click and even. Okay. Oh, go. yeah. oh good. Yeah. That was good. Right. And when you're wearing a helmet, lock your eyes forward as though you were a droid. So that when you move, don't and you're posing for changing pose for a photographer. Don't let your eye, don't just move your eyes. Lock your eyes to where you have to force to move your, your head all the time. And that's the, a real trick that I see a lot of people that wear helmets. You can, you can see that they're actually turning their head inside their helmet rather than turning their helmet as their head. It really helps bring that out. And Chris Bartlett pointed out to me, slow your movements down. If you're posing for photographers here at the con, slow it down. It really gives them a chance to realize that you're giving them something special rather than allowing them to walk up to you, take one click shot and walk away. If you're gonna give different poses, move into the pose, don't just strike the pose and you'll get a lot better results. We're gonna play a game with that right now that Chris is gonna lead you through, but first we need to warm up. So Mr. Childers, show us what your body is capable of doing. Okay. Last time he did this, he had these really tight jeans on with cowboy boots. I'm so appreciative well, of what you wore today. I don't know what today. I'm supposed to do, but I, I laugh because warming up is really key. And as you look how I am right now, something like this. Um, we're all of the all connectors that I took for granted as a youngin, like the connector tissue, the fibers, because I could always do crazy stuff with my body, but those tighten up as you get older. So the key is like loosening up all of these connectors, right? So like really side bending and holding try it, try is like key to really open all this up, right? So I do a lot of really over side stretching on either side. You want to try to hold your hips in one place and really reach over and over and over. How long are you holding it? Not literally, but until it starts to hurt a little bit. And you notice that <laughs> and he, back off. he's controlled. It's not just like reach and rip. Everything is controlled, and that's what's so important. Yeah, it is. You got to work on the breath, right? Like you're breathing, you know, inhale and your exhale. It's kind of yoga based, but it's that same feeling, right? So you want to lengthen, 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 lengthen. So, and I'm used to improv and doing things bigly because dancers are like, they're like, you can do anything and they run you to death and you're doing all this crazy stuff. Um, and now that I'm older, I'm smarter. But warming up is, is definitely key. I think I'm smarter. I don't know if that's for real. Um, don't worry, yeah. the babes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is that good? That's great <laughs> stretches. I'm like. Um, they don't believe that you can. Re yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Leg. Oh my God. Leg. I still have my legs. I don't know why my back is not working. God, for being 80 years old. But the legs are still old, there. You're great. <laughs> and I can put my arm behind my head. <laughs> Beautiful. That's hilarious. So we hope you're getting a couple ideas. Um, right now, Chris Bartlett's going to lead you. In fact, the panel is going to lead you through a little game that we play so we can see what you do in a certain period of time. And I hope everybody plays this game. Chris, take it away. OK. So uh, one of the great things at, at Comic-Cons is we'll see people in costumes who've spent so long building their costumes. Maybe entire families have been building their costumes. Uh, you know, maybe it's been months or a year that you've been building this. And then you come to a convention where this is your audience, you know, this is your stage. And then someone might say, oh, you look great, can I get a photo with you? And then, and then you're so tired because you've been working on this for a year and you're hot and, you're, and then the photo ends up kind of looking like you're waiting for a bus instead of, uh, you know, the energy of your character, right? Or whatever your character is, like the king over here. You, you are so regal, yes, and yeah, look at that, that's great, yes. And, uh, and so I love the, the, the motion, you've obviously been working on that, that's great. And, um, and so anyway, so I thought maybe we could do some, um, you know, energy poses, yeah. so that when someone comes up and takes a picture, you will feel the energy of if you're a king or a Jedi or a Batgirl. Um, okay, so so we'll do that now, right? Yeah. All right. Are going to do it with me? Okay. All right. And how many how many are we going to do? Oh, uh, let's say four or five. You feel it. Okay. You feel what you're so, okay. To so think of your character, the one that you are are yeah, playing. And uh, Adam is a gorilla. Chris is the uh, Spider-Man. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Chris <laughs> Cannoli is Dude Vader. And I'll, I'll play a uh, I'll play a droid. I'll be an old lady. <laughs> okay. All right. So the so imagine someone's gonna take our photo. And you have Should to we do get this closer? Too. Should we get close? No, no. I mean, yes. Closer <laughs> together. Here we go. Yeah. All right. And then we'll take. All right. Photo one. One, two, three, four. Next. One, two, three, four. Like a camera is getting them. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now we want to see you do it, getting into different nice. poses. Even okay. if you're just sitting there, you want to stand up and do it and get into a pose. That's what we want to see. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Ready? So. Okay, we're gonna get ready for our first one. Ah, oh, there you go. Yeah. Hey. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Yeah. Okay. And there's a Jedi little, over little, there. Little kid comes up to you, or a person comes up, and they want to photograph with you. Princess. So here we go. And uh, one, two, nice. three, oh, four. Great. And one, nice. two, yeah. it's three, Spider-Man over there. Four, at Princess Leia. Yes. One, yeah. two, great. three, nice. four. One, awesome. two, Ooh, yeah. three. Well, I was really hoping to see my wonderful king here. <laughs> king. Oh, we, got, we got a special yeah. performance already. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because you're so awesome. Okay, let me look oh on. Oh my gosh. Let me look on this side of the room. Ready? And freeze. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And freeze. Two, three. Oh, very good. Four. And one, two, nice. three, Excellent. four. And Perfect. one, two. See, it's really important for you to change that look and to just, it doesn't take much. Hold it, grab it, it's yours. Okay? So this is really, really cool. I love it. Yeah, All right, I'm going to give you a round of applause. Okay, let's talk about that movement behind the makeup. Somebody take it away. Oh, behind the makeup? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, um, hmm. usually I am uh, covered by a mask, but when you're rehearsing a scene, um, I'll just tell you a behind the scenes uh, uh, moment. Uh, our dear friend Carl Weathers, who recently passed away sadly, he and I work together um, almost every day on season three of The Mandalorian. He plays Grief Karga, and I played his right-hand droid, Copper. And so 
uh, he, he and I, he decided, why don't you, we do all of our rehearsals without the mask on, so that he, in his, his words, so we can get this emotional connection between our two characters. And so I, uh, we rehearsed, did all of our lines. I'm, I'm uh, doing all, I'm, you know, performing in the scene um, with him. And, uh, and so we, we figure out the whole story and how we're reacting in, in, in the scenes. Uh, my droid is kind of like a young C-3PO, and that doesn't have a, as much experience or programming. Um, and uh, and so he, the joke is that he always is is alerting him to all these uh, all this information that he already knows. So I, I'll run into the office, and there's there's a ship up above, and he says, "Oh yeah, that's uh, Mandalorian Privateers." But you can see in these moments where he's explaining stuff to Copper in season three. Uh, you can see Carl's emotional connection to me um, because that's how we rehearsed it. So you're a, you know, we might be playing a droid or a Spider-Man or a gorilla, um, but inside we're human. And so um, that is really what brings your character to life. I, at Lucasfilm, we don't, if, if all of the costume parts to C-3PO are in a box, we never say, oh, C-3PO's in the box over here. That's just the costume. And uh, it's not the character until somebody's wearing it. So just like you, in your costumes, it's not a uh, character until you're performing, right? So, um, where was I going? No, that? no, okay. it, it, it is what it is. Yeah. What, what, no, you're absolutely right, but I want you all to try something, okay? And you're gonna try something too. Mm. Show me a really straight face, like as if you have a box on your face. No emotion? No emotion. No. But I want you to show me happy hands. Happy hands and happy shoulders. Like you're so happy. <laughs> and now all of a sudden, show me what happens when you're fearful with a straight face. And show me if you're sad. Straight face. So you see, if your face is behind these masks, you have to make the movement work, right, Adam? Yep. That you go from your fingers to your toes. That if you're happy, even your toes are happy. And this is really important when we have this movement behind the mask, okay? But um, we still make the faces, though. Yeah, yeah and absolutely. Behind the mask. Absolutely. Yeah, it really helps with the energy. Right, it helps with the energy, but you might be sitting there thinking, Okay, I'm going to ignore the body, but I've got this great. Well, we want to be able to see that in everything, okay, and and really make it big. Adam, if you can demonstrate one second, if if you don't mind, the fact that how do you get the arm out from the the chest? How important that chest movement is. It's not just a hand, but if you move your hand, I, I would love to just see that. I'm sorry for interrupting you. No, no, no. It's, uh, so, you mean? The gorilla hand? Yeah, like if you notice, it's not just that, it's the fact that it comes from the chest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, can it, you it, demonstrate it, that? And I'm so sorry I cut you off. No, no, it's okay. It's, so you got to imagine what, how you're built. And uh, so I'm imagining that my hand is a foot longer than it is, and then it's so it's heavier, and you got to do a certain movement in order to reach, because you're going to get, you got to, you know, crush in, crash into the, into the table. If you're doing it like a human being, so you're gonna go this way. And Do you put see your how he down. lifted this whole part of his body? So, lifted because the gorilla would have to do that in order to not to get into things. And then you know the other hand, you know it's it would if it would hold his hand like that, it wouldn't it would go upwards like you know. So so you, if you put your if you put your body down, then your arm looks like it goes upwards because it's too long, and then it that gives gives the illusion of of a, not a human. Arm. Um, what I wanted to say yeah, yeah. Is, is, is also, if you see this, this particular picture is a perfect example. If you see the eyes, these are human eyes. So gorillas have black or red, reddish, brownish eyes. There, there's, no, there's no white in a real gorilla. Um, yeah, so this is a human eye. And one of the reasons that they like our gorillas to use in certain things, especially a lot of comedies, is because we have human eyes, and then the expression is more recognizable by human beings as sad or happy because it comes from the eyes. So you wouldn't see, if you look at a real gorilla, you wouldn't necessarily know if he's happy or sad or angry. 
But with the human, you usually look at the eyes and you see it. So we use the gorilla, we use human eyes in this gorilla, which most people don't realize that it's human eyes, because it, it, it shows the emotion much easier than just have it all black. We're running out of time to do questions. Um, if there's one, it said, one, is there anybody who has, or show me how strong your hand is if you have a question for us. Question. Yes, question. there you go. I can't hear. How did you modify the costume? Oh, okay. So uh, people that know Dude Vader knows the costume changes at every event. So this is about the 800th version of the costume. 3D printing. It's the magic of the universe. Uh, the crest changes for every charity. So if you're out there and you're going to invite me to be a, a pair of your charity, send me your logo. I will 3D print the situation. The actual, this, this full piece was done by a Chinese company that was intrigued by Dude Vader. And so they said, send us some images, we'll print the outfit. And so, because they knew that I do 25 5Ks a year in this thing. And so uh, a lot of times if you, go to eBay, just start looking for other characters, not necessarily your own, and you might find uh, things that you can do. And I strongly, strongly encourage Mashup, because Mashup turns you from an imitator cosplayer into a creative cosplayer, creating something very unique. And don't let people that are with one universe or another root universe say that that's not that's not real cosplay. I think it's the height of cosplay. So mash up as much as possible, and you can really have a lot of fun. What we're going to do is we're going to stand up, let you take that final picture, and we are cosplay movement inside the costume in 2024.